Dear friends, it's so good to be with you today. Today is seventh day of out of 40 days. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I still have 33 days to fast to go and I am excited for this fast and I want to tell you this is the best fasting I have ever done in my life. And I, I want to tell you why, because we are doing this corporately. A lot of people are joining me. It was at the beginning 10, then it became 20, 50, now hundreds, maybe thousands of people joining me for great awakening in our land, great awakening, great revival in our nation. And you know what? Whatever nation you are in, because there are people joining me from Australia, New Zealand, UK. I just want to thank you. I just want to encourage you. You know, Bible says when you fast, in, 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 Jesus told us how to, how to worship him, how to live a Christian life. He said when you fast, when you pray, which means not if, but when. So this is our Christian lifestyle. And I want to tell you, we are in desperate times. We are in times, we are in the end times, and you see what is happening in our nation. Our nation is divided, and people are coming against each other, and the police enforcement, and the racial discriminations, and all these things, not only one side to another, both sides against each other. I just see the enemy, and I want to tell you today, united we stand, divided we fall. We cannot afford to be divided. And God started talking to me, you know, during this fast, He is also showing things in me. And he's telling me, Ushuk, I want to clean you from this. I want to take care of this. And today, I just want to be very transparent with you. God was speaking to my heart. There were things that I was trying to handle with my own strength. And right before this broadcast, I was on my face on the floor. And I repented from the things that I was trying to fix in my life. There were people in my life that I wanted to see them succeed. I wanted to see them becoming overcomers through Jesus Christ more than they wanted them themselves for themselves. Did it ever happen to you? I'm sure it did. Like trying to fix people, trying to fix things. And I said, Lord, I surrender right now. And I'm so empty. I haven't eaten all day. I drank and drank a lot of water. And I'm so weak right now, but strong in the spirit. And I went before the Lord and I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I have been trying to be, like, be you. Not like you, but I've been trying to be you. I'm sorry, God. And today was an all day, maybe self-examination and day of repentance for me. And I just want you to know, God started just pouring into my, he's not a condemning God, but Holy Spirit comes and convicts our hearts. This started happening in my heart. So today I want to share with you a very important scripture that uh, last week uh, I was teaching also a Bible study to my team. And I wanna, God told me today, share this with them because this is how I feel today. Uh, I want to share from Matthew 5. A sermon on the Mount. You know, it's so difficult sometimes. Something is so preached, so taught, and so many times people know and remember this. But also, it is very profound. And I want to show you from my perspective. You know what I, when I read this? When Jesus saw the crowds, Matthew 5, verse 5. When Jesus saw the crowds, uh, no, verse 1, I'm sorry. When Jesus saw the cross, he went up on the mountain. And when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he began to teach them. I mean, imagine God of the universe, creator of everything, is coming down to earth to show us the way. Coming down to earth to save us and show us his unconditional love. And God Almighty, this is God in human flesh, coming to give his first sermon face to face in person to us. This is how important this is. This is first thing I want you to understand. I want you to try to get a grasp of it. And I've been talking to you, meditate on his word day and night. And I was meditating on this. Jesus came and sat down on the mountain, on the floor, and became level with them. 
level with crowds, level with all these people around him from all ba different backgrounds, all different uh, financial status or educations. Crowds was following him and he sat down. He leveled with them. He became like one of us. He was not uh, on a platform. He was not in a place that was, he was looking down on them or higher than them. No. He leveled with them. He sat down and he started teaching. Imagine when you read the entire chapter is in red letters. This is a sermon, 100% coming from the mouth of God. How exciting it is, is this? And I want to tell you, I heard, I read a book, amazing book. And in that book, it was talking about missionaries in china when people are becoming pastors they cannot have a bible in their hands they cannot carry a bible they are forbidden it is against the law to to out do outreach any kind of and you know how they become pastors how they get ordained they have to memorize book of matthew they get and they go into the caves and they go in on the mountains, hiding in solitary places. Memorize book of Matthew. And then memorize John. Memorizing Romans. This is what they do. And this was mandatory for them. Because this teaches, this book, especially Matthew, teaches about Jesus' earthly ministry. So when you see these red letters, it gets me excited, excited more than ever because Jesus is speaking. He is preaching his first sermon in Matthew 5, 5th chapter. So then he started speaking. This, what I am going to read, is so profound. Because we don't know, you don't know, many Westerners don't know this principle. He says, blessed which means spiritually prosperous, happy. Happy are those who are poor in the spirit. Who are poor in the spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. How amazing is this? Poor in the spirit, being poor in the spirit. What, is, what does it mean to be poor in the spirit? God told me today to tell you, we need to be poor in the spirit. We have been so rich, like in book of Revelation, uh, it talks about uh, the church, Lodosian church, so rich. We know, we possess it all, we have Bibles everywhere. Where, while there are countries that they cannot, people cannot have Bibles. My TV programs go into the countries that, like Saudi Arabia, that people cannot have a Bible. It's forbidden. Praise God that He uses satellite TV, He uses internet and Facebook and thousands of people write to me from those countries. But here is the thing, it says, blessed are those who are poor, happy are those who are poor in the spirit. What is poor in the spirit? I was like meditating on this word, meditating day and night. What a delight to meditate. And then God started showing me, poor in the spirit is this. You are always needy. You are always codependent. You are always, you are always clingy to God. Maybe you are codependent. I used to be codependent to man. As a former abused Muslim woman, I needed a man to tell me what to eat, what to wear, what to do with my life. Highly educated, but codependent. Needy, clingy. A man would kick me on the floor, spit on me. Still, I was clingy. Tell me what to do with my life. But instead, God told me to be clingy to Him, needy to Him. And today, He wants you to. Maybe you are so rich, so comfortable in your lives. And many Westerners are. Even the poor in the Western world is rich in Africa, rich in Turkey, rich in third world countries. But today, I am inviting you, if you want to see revival, true revival, we need to become poor in the spirit. You know what is that? Say, I am bankrupt without you. I, I am bankrupt. I need you. I cannot do one more day without you. I'm nothing without you. Being nothing is not worthlessness. Not knowing your identity in Christ. But being nothing is telling him you are my everything. This is what we need to do church today. We go to 
churches, we see events, Christians events, and a lot of people, a lot of ministers know how to run a ministry without God. We know we came to a place in America, we came to a place in England, we came to a place in Australia, we know how to run God's business without God. You know, not praying, not praying, prayers, prayerlessness is telling God, I can't do it without you. A lot of times we tell him we can't do it without you. We even, there are Christian marketing people, Christian, and I am not against anybody, but we hire people, even churches hire people to increase their numbers. There are conferences how to increase your numbers in the church, how to get steady membership in the church, while Jesus is telling us, be just poor in the spirit. You know, there are so many people, they were poor in the spirit, in the Bible. You want to think about it? Those were the people, great people of God. One of them, I think, John the Baptist, he said, I need to decrease. He has to increase. John the Baptist was poor in the spirit. Not only outwardly poor, but his dependence was only on God. And you know what? Not only that, he was an opener, forerunner. He was opening the way for Jesus Christ and it was enough for him. He didn't need to be. They asked him. He said, I am not even worthy to untie his sandals. He was poor in the spirit. He knew his place. Another person comes in the Bible to my mind, Mary, Martha and Mary, you know, two sisters. And one was working and doing things with his, her own ability. And then Mary was at the feet of Jesus. She was poor in the spirit because she couldn't get enough of Jesus. She always wanted more. You know, I cannot give you hunger. But maybe God, if you pray, God will give you that kind of hunger. Because poor is always desperate, always hungry. You know, poor in the spirit, a person is always needy. And God says, blessed. That person is blessed. That person is happy. Happy because always in need of God. And today, I'm not going to shower you with a lot of verses, but this really touched my heart. And we became so rich, so intelligent in the church. In, with our theologians, I heard a preacher said once, philosophers take something very simple. Very simple and make it very complicated. Very complicated. So they can look deep. They can look, look intelligent. They can look better than other people. And they have their own cliques because they understand deep things. But then Jesus Christ came down. God of the universe who possesses all knowledge. Who created everything. And he made things simple. Man makes things complicated, but God made things simple for us. And today, I want to invite you, not, it is okay to search deep things of God. We, God gives us mind of Christ, mind of the creator of the universe, he gives us. But imagine, think of this, from 1 Corinthians, first chapter, I believe it is the 25th verse. God's foolishness is wiser than man's wisdom. God's foolishness is wiser than any philosophers. And that first chapter talks about where is the noble man? Where is the philosopher of this age? He talks about it. And then he says, God choose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God choose the weak things of the earth to shame the strong. So we can only boast in him so we can only depend on him so he could he could be our only source and today i want to just invite you it happened to me today i was trying to fix things fix people help people and i was going like how can i help this person this family how can i do this how can i take care of this and god said stop 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 aren't you depending on me aren't you depending on my strength I said, yes, Lord, I cannot do this by myself. I need you. And I am poor in the spirit. I am poor and I choose to be poor in the spirit. 
Poor in the spirit is never is full of herself or himself. Always knows this is a humility. This is a level of humility. I got prom promises. He says, for theirs will be the kingdom of God. I'm giving them kingdom of heaven. And he's not only giving them theirs. Already they possess it on earth. So this is not a future promise only. This is, you know, thy kingdom come, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is what poor in the spirit possess. Because for them, they have to be always connected. They have to be always seeking. They have to be always in desperate shape. Again, I come to that simple word. If we want to see revival, if we want to get desperate for, we want to see great awakening, we need to get desperate for God. Woman bleeding for 12 years, she was desperate. Man whose friends brought him down, who was paralyzed, they brought him down from the ceiling, from the rooftop. They were desperate. He was desperate. Today God is calling you. Jacob, who wrestled with God, he was desperate. And God is calling us today. Come to that poor in the spirit place. Be desperate for him. Be desperate for him. In the morning when you wake up, you know, yesterday I asked my chaplain, she corrects my English. I said, I said, I, every morning I told them I roll on the floor. I roll. She said, because I, my husband and I sleep on, on, on a, two mattresses on the floor. I just don't. Don't like big high beds. So it's easy for me. She said, you need to explain. People, you don't want people to hurt themselves. But the first thing in the morning I do, I just go on the floor. And it's easy for me from the mattress to go on the floor. It is easy. But I choose to do that. You know why? Because if I walk to anything, I get distracted. And I don't want that. Because I know that I can only make that day. Not because I'm super spiritual or anything. I can only make it. With his help. When I am weak, then I am strong. So to, to the carnal minded man, when I speak like this, they say, you are so weak. You are so needy to a point of sake. You are not healthy. But through the eyes of God, this is something that he is blessed to see me. He is happy to see me. I am in need of him every moment of my life. So if we're going to do, folks, ministry, if we're going to get revival, if we are going to see, we want to see desperately great awakening, God to cleanse this land, we need to get desperate. And today I want to pray for you. And I want to pray for me together. Won't you pray with me? Open your hands. Open your hearts. Jesus, we come before you. Lord, I declare that you are my Lord. You are my Savior. You are my protector. You are my friend. I never could call you, God, my friend when I was a Muslim. Thank you for being my friend. And you are my teacher. You are my guide. And you are so many things to me. Tell him what he is to you. Tell him. And today I come before you in humility. And I am asking your forgiveness, God, for the times that I try to do things with my own power and with my own strength. I repent, God. Even today I was thinking and my heart was heavy because I was carrying other people's burdens instead of releasing and surrendering to you. I'm sorry, God. I am poor, God. I am naked. I am weak. I need you. Without you, I am nothing. I cannot do the ministry. I cannot do this live broadcast right now. I cannot do anything without you. So I'm acknowledging you. Even yesterday in front of the White House, when I went there and I was nervous and my hands were shaking. But I knew, I knew that I had to do that. And you gave me strength. And the moment I opened my mouth out of obedience, I found strength in you. So I pray right now in the strong name of Jesus, Lord, make all your Christians, all your followers right now, all your people poor in the spirit. Teach us what is to be poor in the spirit. 
We don't want to rely and depend on our agendas, our this, our three steps or that. We want to rely on you, your Holy Spirit, God. Today, I want to be Mary. And I'm going to, after this, I promise you, I'm going to sit at your feet. I'm just sitting at your feet. Even before I eat, I know that you are going to feed me with spiritual food. And I pray for everyone who is watching this broadcast right now and will be watching, Lord. Touch them in a special way and bring to their understanding how much they need you. No matter how much money they have, what kind of house or comfort zone they are in, no matter. Show them God today. Touch their hearts in a special way. We are returning to you, returning to you, your people. Forgive us. Forgive us in Jesus Christ's name. I pray for revival. Great awakening. Amen and amen and amen. I love you. God bless you. You have a wonderful time, wonderful evening or morning with Christ Jesus.